Good evening, good evening. This is Spirit Journey. Today is Wednesday, December 11th, 2019, and the time is now 6.41 p.m. I want to talk about the shooting that happened yesterday afternoon, the shooting in Jersey City, New Jersey. I learned about the shooting today when I was on my way to the VA hospital and the person in the elevator with me had a newspaper and it had these uh, bold headlines regarding the shooting. So when I got home today, that's when I uh, went on the internet and started looking around to see what happened. But interesting enough, when I was on my way home uh, for my appointment, I was like um, right near home and there was a, a fight. There was an individual who was uh, a suspect who was resisting arrest. Now, I had just put up a video on that, a short video regarding my thoughts about it. So I, I won't go into details about that since, you know, if you want to find out about it, uh, just look at the video just before this one. But my thoughts are really, this whole, this whole shooting thing is problematic for me. Something does not sit right with me in all this. And why I'm mentioning about the fight that occurred today on the corner of 42nd Street that I did the video on earlier, here it was one suspect and the number of police cars that was brought to the scene at least 12 that I physically counted. So I know there were more that I could not see, but at least 12 that I actually saw. And there were three cops that were pounding on a very small individual, a relatively young man, he could have been in his 20s, very slender and built. He, his weight was maybe about 130 pounds, and he looked like maybe 5'4". So it was a small guy, and they can't subdue him uh, without really harming the fellow. Yes, he was resisting arrest, but for one suspect and all these cars, it, it was a real melee. So then my attention goes back on the Jersey City, New Jersey uh, shooting that occurred at a kosher, I think it was a grocery store. And what I heard was like, it's a, what the uh, reporters who were at the scene were saying that it's a war zone. So. It's very hyped up and everything. But I asked myself, I said, okay, there's a shooting. Now there are mass shootings all over in the New York Tri-State area. And so what made this one any different than any other shooting or mass shootings? Well, the difference with this one it's where the shootout occurred. And I cannot figure out why two men, and these were older guys. Let me, I have a, my computer on right now. Let me see what it says here. Okay. I'm just looking at the people's name. Okay, let me read this part of it. It says, in an afternoon news conference, New Jersey Attorney General Gubir Gruel said a pipe bomb was recovered at the scene and he identified the attackers 
who were killed by police officers in a long shootout as David Anderson, 47, and Francine Graham, 50. Wow. So it seems to be playing out as a anti-Semitic hate crime. These are older gentlemen and I wonder whether they have any record of police record of doing violence. Now they didn't show, at least in this page here that I'm looking at, any pictures of them. But I believe these two men could be uh, both blacks. And something in this other video that I saw, something about the uh, Hebrew Israelite organization or individuals that may be associated with that faith system. So I'm wondering why someone in that faith system would want to go in a kosher store and shoot out. But it, it says that the, the melee actually occur, started out at a cemetery. Get that? A, a cemetery. And there was an undercover cop either at or near a cemetery. Let me see if I can find that. Let's see. Okay. Authorities suspect Anderson and Graham gunned down police detective Joe Seals around around noon Tuesday at a cemetery before heading to the market a mile away. Now what was going on at this uh, cemetery? Why they were there? Why was the, the cop there? Was the cop just so happened to be there or was he undercover there? It doesn't say. Let me see anything else here. Okay, so Shay said surveillance video shows two people pull up in front of the JC Kosher supermarket in a stolen van, slowly exit the vehicle armed with long guns, and immediately, immediately begin firing. Okay. Okay, there was a one, su one survivor to the shootout, but the, they're withholding his name. Three had died in the, in the market. I also have to say my condolences to the people who died in the uh, supermarket and for the police officer who died at the cemetery. I was meaning to say that. My apology for not saying it uh, immediately. Yes, uh, violence to anyone is horrible. But this whole thing does not sit well with me. So you have a, a, um, a large gathering of, of police force at this uh, kosher food market. And it's, it's such a hyped up. And it lasted for... I think they said two hours. That's a long time. That's a lot of tenacity and, and just <laughs> I don't, all, all that gunpowder, you know, power that was exerted there. And they said that the, you know, the two suspects were killed by police officers. So why? Why, if it's a... I, I'm trying to just make sense out of all this. Any type of killing is wrong. But I'm just trying to f understand how come this one is getting so much attention. You have shootings every day. These were two people who were doing the shootings but all this force, why so much attention 
when this occurred? Well, part of the answer is that not all crimes are equal. This crime, what would turn out to be a crime, was that they had entered, the suspects had allegedly entered into a supermarket, but this is a kosher supermarket. Kosher meaning Jewish. And so because of that, whatever crime that happens, and if the suspects are not Jewish, then it's going to be classified as a hate crime and a anti-Semitic uh, violence. And so you're going to be handling that differently. And so they also had what, what, I, what was a, a conference. And people of authority or wearing suits and ties are at this conference to discuss what was, what was happening. Now, if shootouts at bodegas and the like happen every day and they don't have SWAT teams and everything at the scene and such a long shootout, why is this one getting the special coverage while others, and, and, and death is death, whether the person is black, white, Jewish, Hispanic, Asian, why when it's Jewish individuals or their, their property is being compromised, why do they get special attention from the media and it be classified as a hate crime versus when there's shootouts, could be two or more shooters, but you don't hear it be said that it is a, um, oh, what's the term in life they were saying, a war zone. It's hyped up. And so again, like today, when I was on my way home, one man caused all these police cars to come to the scene. Why is it that when there's blacks involved in something, why so much force is sent out to squash it? You have physical, you know, uh, violent crimes that happen in many communities, not just black communities. But I noticed that it seems like the, the powers that are used against uh, black suspects is so heavy. And if what is happening is happening in a Jewish establishment, there is immediate different way of handling the matter and you have to have a press conference. A press conference. It's making me feel that some people are treated that they're more important than others. I think all life is important, regardless of your religion or your race or your nationality. I feel that, I, again, I don't know the depth of what happened with this shootout in a uh, kosher deli, but I'm just seeing that there's difference in sentiment when Identi identical crimes happen. Again, it's a shootout. But now you're going to have different officials talking about it because it's in a kosher supermarket versus a Spanish-speaking supermarket or regular um, African-American grocery or even an Asian grocery place. 
people, the authorities, I should say, treat the same crime differently according to the demographics, depending on, upon who the victim is and who is the suspect. It's automatically going to be treated differently and that I have a problem with. Just like I also have a problem with the Jeffrey Epstein, that what he did, he was a glamorized pimp. He committed horrible things upon young teenage women, teenage girls, excuse me, and the victims of his crimes I called um, trafficked, human trafficked victims, and they're not called prostitutes. But then, on the other side of the coin, you have people of color who are doing, you know, activities with their bodies, but they're called prostitutes, and they are thrown in jail, and are prostitutes prosecuted for their behaviors. So again, people are being treated differently and how they're labeled is differently. And according to the label is how the media is going to treat them, how the authorities are going to treat them by the labels. The labels that they will inherit in a matter. So it just seems like today that it's the same activities, but the perception of those activities are going to be viewed based on external things such as race, color, and religion. And this has to stop because justice is for all people to embrace and enjoy its protections. But if you don't treat individuals equally under the law, then why even have it? Why even have it? Things are happening every day and it makes me angry at how some people are given better treatment than others. More attention. So it makes people think that one group is more important than the other. And it's sad. This whole Jersey City shooting, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. What would cause two middle-aged men somehow you had a Cemetery. Now, I don't know what, what type of cemetery it was and why that would spill over into a kosher market. It sounds to me like a setup. And you notice with these, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, when you have policies being made and some strong arm person want to exercise their strength to see how far they can get away. They always seem to experiment in a predominantly black community. Jersey City, yes, has a lot of different ethnic groups, but the people who live there are people of color, primarily. And again, the street that is on, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Street, which heavily suggests that there's a lot of black people that live there. Yes, you have blacks that live there, but they don't, they don't hold true power. They live there, and they may live there in Jersey City or in the United States for many, many generations, but they have no political power. You have people in Jersey City, people from all over the world who have a lot of hope 
and dreams and they come to Jersey City, start a business and they do business with the people that live there, predominantly people of color, blacks and Hispanics, but the longtime residents of this country don't have the same opportunities. They are giving their resources to these new groups and they're really not appreciated. And even though they do business with you, you don't respect them. And they feel it. And they're angry. So yes, you have many, many different types of people that live in places like Jersey City, New Jersey. Yes. But they know they're not liked. And they know that they're not being represented. When I looked at the press conference that occurred yesterday, not one of those people were black and none of them were women. All of them looked like white men. All of them. Why is it that if New Jersey and Jersey City is so diverse, why were, was it that the people who were at this press conference, who were speaking there, why, why were they not represented of the demographics that lives there in Jersey City? Why? Why? And then in today's conference, you had one person of color, a South Asian man, and he had a turban on. All of them were just very immaculate. They looked very business, suit and tie, very polished look, but no black people and no women. These are some of the clues what could be happening, that things are happening in these experimental communities, those communities that are very, very diverse, as they call it. But the people, the longtime residents, they don't have any political power, and they're really being pushed out of their own community economically, and they're just stuck and they're, they're, they, they're just floundering. They have no political power, none. And with that, and they know that you don't have any real true economic or political power, that authorities, some illegal authorities could come by and exploit that and experiment on you with activities such as a possible, you know, I'm not going to even say that word, but that, is it real? Was this a PSYOP? What was it? Does it make sense, middle-aged guys at a cemetery and then they're being blamed to, for um, killing someone and the body found in somebody's trunk, it just it just doesn't sit right with me. It all looks like it's something that is higher up. It doesn't sit right with me. And I think with this, this shooting in Jersey City, that is to implement some type of policy. And the policy is going to be very stringent and oppressive upon the black community or any non-Jewish community members and making those laws so stringent that you can't really even go outside without being frisked. This is dangerous time for black people. I just say be very careful what you do and what you say and keep your eyes open at what's going on in your community. That's all I have to say right now. 
Stay safe, guys. Stay safe. Use your head and take deep breaths. I know I do. I know I have to do that. Yes, what you see here in this Jersey City, New Jersey shooting is something, uh, I would say, not, not real. It's not real. And it's just going to be used to promote policies of more oppression on the citizens of America. I thank you. And I thank you for listening. And feel, please feel free to, you can comment below and you can share this audio with friends and family members. And those of you who like my content and my channel, you may wish to consider to donate to my channel. You can PayPal me. You go to my channel Spirit Journey and on the top banner to the right you'll see a PayPal me link. You just click on it and follow the rest of the prompt. Any amount would be appreciated and I thank you in advance for your gift to me. Peace, love and joy to all peoples on the world. Stay safe and stay happy. Thank you.